Hi, I'm here with Doc from Greptile from the YC Winter 24 batch. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. All right, um, so what is Greptile? So at Greptile, we're building AI that understands large code bases, and software teams use it for things like reviewing pull requests and answering questions about their code base. When you think about the value that a company or a user gets from Greptile, like how, what is it? Where are they finding utility? It's a couple of things for software teams, especially senior members of the software teams, tend to spend a lot of time reviewing pull requests and reviewing code in general. And uh, humans are imperfect at this, and it is also a very time-consuming process, and that time is maybe better spent doing more creative things. And so we take away a lot of that time, reduce the amount of time it takes for code to get reviewed, and we usually reveal many more bugs than a purely human-driven process would. The customers that you work with, um, do they want to have nobody reviewing code and they want to ha entrust Greptile with that 100%? Do they want to have some people doing this as well? How do they think about it? So I think virtually all of our customers and us, we both agree that uh, a human should be involved in the process. I think code reviews as a part of the software development lifecycle serve a purpose greater than just detecting bugs. It's a opportunity for mentorship. And there's some amount of clairvoyance that senior engineers have in what a code base should look like in the future that AI, at least today, cannot really replicate. And so you usually say, well, this is gonna do all the stuff that is not interesting for you to do, like just carefully reading the code for little mistakes, and you can focus on the bigger picture things as a human being. Um, and I understand you guys have several customers, you're reviewing a lot of lines of code. Like, what, what are the numbers these days? So in a given week, we usually review anywhere from five to eight million lines of code. And uh, this is growing at a fairly high pace. This past week, we revealed 20,000 bugs across the pull request that Reptile reviewed for customers. So this is something that people like a lot. It's stuff that you, they would have slipped through the cracks and would have caused problems later on. I understand that a lot of what you're doing is enabled by the language models that are out now, but um, how do you think about like, why now is the right time for Greptile, for a product that reviews code reviews? Yeah, there's a couple of things. So my co-founders and I had started to experiment with large language models when DaVinci 2 had just come out about, about three or four years ago. And we'd started to notice that there was a um, clear use case in code because they understood code better than they understood maybe even natural language. And where, when we see large language models today, they're they still are better at reading code than they are at writing it. And to us, it's more interesting to take their current uh, best capabilities and see what is the most value that they can create. We started by building code base Q&A, so just loading up your code base and asking questions about it, like how does XYZ work? And we found that if you're able to teach a large language model to, um, to understand an entire code base, the most useful thing you can do with that understanding is to find bugs in it and, and prevent code from going down. And I think the second major thing is, we often think about, this is a longer term trajectory, but software is not just toys and like it was maybe 50 years ago. Like today, uh, we have, our, our grid and our supply chains are controlled by software. And like our world is only as resilient as our most, or least resilient piece of software. Mm -hmm. And making software more resilient is something that only gets more important every year. How did you guys get onto this idea? What led you here? We started out, as I said, working on code-based context. And the reason for that was we were hacking on some projects in college. And then one of our original team members decided to uh, go and get a job and not continue on with us. And he had written our entire front end code base and we just didn't know how to work with it. And this was also something that we'd experienced at companies we'd worked at, just code bases get large and they're very difficult to work with. It's actually most of why the job of engineering is hard is because code bases are big and complicated. And so we wanted to figure out if there was a way to take these enormous code bases and large language models that actually have limited context windows, find a way to teach them to completely understand the code base and answer questions about it. So we focused on this problem for a long time and then at some point, we realized that the most the, the problem of not knowing your code base is temporary. Like once you spend enough time at a company, you'll understand the code base. But the problem that remains persistent is uh, is, is finding bugs, and you can do that really well if you understand the code base, which is what we had spent all this time working on. Okay, so you've built this product, you've got these users, you're reviewing all this code. What's what's been surprising that you've learned along the way about AI and its relevance for developer uh, for developer tools? I was surprised to learn how much variation there is in developers' um, propensity to adopt AI developer tools. There are people that are uh, very, very smart developers that are completely against adopting any AI. And I think part of that uh, might just be like discomfort around uh, around like AI maybe like affecting the nature of their job. Um, and then there's people at the very other end of the extreme which are, have very much strongly embraced 
uh, AI as a tool. One of the things that we try to figure out when we were seeing if a customer is a good fit is just to see how high conviction they are around AI's ability to improve their business. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you get lumped in with the AI coding tools even though you're doing more code review instead of actual code gen? This was a really big problem early on. And I think early on, uh, engineering leaders and, and engineers didn't have uh, enough context to kind of separate these tools and they all kind of look like the same vague thing, which is AI and code. But as time has gone on and people adopted some of these tools and they're using them, people have much higher fidelity in differentiating what different parts of their uh, system can be augmented. So a lot of the folks that watch these videos and tune in are people thinking about starting their own businesses. You were there not too long ago with like the early days of Greptile. What advice, if any, would you have for someone that's thinking of setting out and doing a startup today? I think um, it's that there are many, many ways to get distracted. And uh, often, it no matter how much you are aware of the things that can distract you, you will, you're still not immune from distraction. You just really should focus on building products that your customers love and need and, and want uh, and, and just don't focus on anything else. I think there's a hundred other things that seem like there are things you should plausibly focus on, but they're just not as important as the core couple of things. And as long as you just do those, you can probably get pretty far. If someone wanted to check out Greptile and learn more about it or even try it at their company, how would they do that? So it's actually free to try. So you can go to greptile.com and it takes less than a minute to sign up. You can just connect your GitHub and start using it. Okay, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks so much.